the scheming stepmother became allergic to eating eggs, and the scumbag father locked Zioli-Anbo in the basement. If she didn't apologize, she would die outside. On the brink of death, nine top-notch wealthy uncles descended from the sky. Collaboration Sorry, there are arrangements for bankruptcy. Hard fate conquers kinship. Sorry, it's fake. Nine uncles are getting smoother and their careers are spreading all over the world. The scheming stepmother panicked and wanted to take Li Bao home. Mr. Gu said, I'm just getting old, I'm not stupid. Get lost. Get lost one minute late, Kyoto. Garbage dad is not giving up, preparing to rely on his daughter's wealth to once again build friendships. Until Yabao's biological father appeared, you're not qualified enough to be a cheap dad for my daughter. Keywords of the novel After being favored by nine uncles, Fubao fell off the horse without a pop-dot-up window. After being favored by nine uncles, Fubao fell off the horse. Download the complete text. After being favored by nine uncles, Fubao fell off the horse. Read the latest chapter. Chapter 1 I'm right, I don't apologize. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 I'm right, I don't apologize Pop. The clear sound echoed throughout the living room. The palm print on the face is clearly visible. Li Bao's eyes were filled with tears, but he stubbornly refused to let them fall. Husband, what are you doing with Ling Bao? She didn't mean it either. Li Ya, the stepmother of Li Bao, was lying weakly on the sofa, pleading with him. She knew you had a protein allergy and even intentionally mixed eggs with rice for you to eat. She was so scheming at such a young age, but when she grew up, she still had it. Ling Ziao let out a cold snort. Oh my, it's just a child's prank. Besides, my family doctor has also come to check on me and there's no life-threatening situation. Let's just forget about this matter. A prank. Shear is as old as her. Why doesn't Shear play a prank? Sure enough, a child without a mother is just uneducated. Ling Ziao finished speaking and looked up at Li Bao, shouting angrily, What are you still waiting for? Why don't you apologize to Aunt Li? I'm right, I won't apologize. Li Bao stubbornly looked up. During lunch, she witnessed Li Ya himself crushing one dot third of the protein and mixing it in the rice to frame her. She doesn't recognize things that Li Bao hasn't done before. Also, she has a mother. Her mother only went to faraway places. If only my mother were here, she would definitely not let bad women bully her. Trapped by Li Ya, beaten by Ling Ziao, even Li Bao did not cry. However, Thinking of his mother, Li Bao suddenly had a sour nose and tears streamed down his face. At this moment, Ling Ziao's phone rang, it was the secretary calling. Ling Ziao impatiently pressed the answer button. The secretary spoke cautiously and said, Mr. Ling, there are still three days left before the project in the north of the city starts. There are no banks willing to lend us money now. If it continues. We will face huge compensation, and if the funds cannot be mobilized, the company will have to go bankrupt. I understand, please contact the Gu family in Kyoto. After hanging up the phone, Ling Ziao looked up at Zio Lianbo and saw that she was still sobbing. Ling Ziao impatiently kicked Zio Lianbo and angrily shouted, Cry and cry, you know how to cry in a day. Since you were born, this family has not had a smooth time. Ling Ziao instructed people to lock the grain treasure in the basement. If she doesn't admit her mistake, she won't give her food. I want to see when she can show off her strength, Ling Ziao said before leaving. After Ling Ziao left, Li Ya, who was originally weak, also regained her energy. She got up and walked to the basement, staring at Li Bao with a sharp smile in her eyes. That smile made Li Bao's hair stand on end. Grey Bao instinctively hides back. Li Ya didn't intend to let go of Li Bao. Li Bao hid and she approached. Finally, Li Bao's body was tightly pressed against the wall, with nowhere to hide. 
Liya sneered and asked, why don't you hide? Aren't you quite good at hiding? Greybow instinctively shook his head. Liya suddenly reached out and grabbed Li Bao's hair, causing her to bump against the wall. Li Bao wanted to resist, but she had no strength to break free from Liya. Gradually, she gave up the struggle. Blood seeped out of Li Bao's forehead, and he was weak to the brink of death. Upon seeing this, Liya finally let go and left the basement satisfied. Xiao Bao, call your uncle Gu Jingchen and ask him to take you home. His phone number is 183. This gentle voice seemed to be her mother talking to her. Li Bao instinctively opened his eyes, but in the empty basement, there was no one else besides her. Ling Bao reluctantly climbed up to the landline, picked up the receiver, and dialed Uncle Da's phone number Kyoto Gu Jiao. Mr. Gu is having a family meeting. Let you investigate the truth about your sister's car accident back then. It's been over a year now, have you found any results? Nine handsome and tough men sat upright. Also, have you found your sister's orphan? Dad, we're doing our best to find it. But Kyoto is so big, it's not easy to find someone, let alone that they have never seen this niece before. Last time in the meeting, you also told me that the efficiency of handling things was really low. The nine brothers of the Gu family looked solemn. The Gu family is a prestigious family, but the male offspring of the Gu family are prosperous. It was only after giving birth to nine sons in a row that Mr. Gu gave birth to a daughter, Gu Jinghan. The Gu family treats Gu Jinghan as a precious treasure from top to bottom. At the age of twenty, Gu Jinghan fell in love with a poor boy, but faced opposition from all members of the Gu family. Gu Jinghan insisted on being with that poor boy, and even cut off ties with his family for the sake of that man thinking of his sister Gu Jinghan, the nine brothers of the Gu family suddenly changed their faces and remained silent. Suddenly, Gu Jingchen's phone rang. The other eight brothers looked at Gu Jingchen with a sympathetic expression on their faces. At Gu's home, there is a family meeting every day, and during the meeting, the phone must be turned off. Gu Jingchen stayed up late last night to rush through the design draft, and his head was also groggy. During today's meeting, he forgot to mute his phone. At this moment, the phone kept ringing, breaking the tranquility in the living room. Gu Jingchen is ready to hang up the phone. Mr. Gu ordered, don't hang up, give me hands. Free. Gu Jingchen had no choice but to press the answer button and then turn on the hands. Free function. Excuse me, are you my eldest uncle Gu Jingchen? The blood on Li Bao's forehead kept overflowing, and he was locked in the basement for a day without eating or drinking. He was very weak, and his speech was also weak. The Gu family members were thrilled when they heard Li Bao's milky questions. How did this bare-faced niece know Gu Jingchen's personal phone number? Uncle, I'm so hungry. Can you come pick me up? Xiao Lianbo on the other end of the phone asked in a low voice. Of course, baby, tell your uncle where you are now and I will come to pick you up and take you home immediately. Gu Jingchen didn't even notice, his voice trembling as he spoke. After Xiao Lianbo weakly reported an address, he panicked and hung up the phone. Because she heard the commotion outside, Ling Ziyao returned. Xiao Lianbo doesn't want Ling Ziyao to know about her phone call to her uncle. After Ling Ziyao entered the door, he saw Li Ya still lying on the sofa, with a pale face and a servant taking care of her. In fact, Ling Ziyao's feelings for Li Ya were not very deep, but he was very clear that Li Bao was not his biological daughter. Every time he thought of this, he would think of the scene of Gu Jinghan being with other men. So, that's why he is so harsh towards Li Bao. Did she admit her mistake? Ling Ziyao asked indifferently. The servant shook his head and said, not yet. Upon hearing the servant's words, Ling Ziyao walked coldly towards the basement. The basement door was pushed open, and Xiao Lianbo thought that her uncle had come to pick her up. He looked up happily, end of this chapter. Did you know your mistake in chapter 2? You are listening at novel full dot audio. Did you know your mistake in chapter 2? Soon, 
Zioliambo's eyes dimmed again. Because it was not her uncle who came to pick her up that suddenly broke into the basement, but Ling Ziao. Ling Ziao looked at Zioliambo with an indescribable anger in his eyes. Zyorenbeo instinctively retreated. But she was already going to stick it to the wall, so when she stepped back, she was forced to stick it tightly to the wall, and there was no way back. Zioliambo looked at Ling Ziao with a pair of eyes full of fear. Through Ling Ziao's gaze, she could confirm that Ling Ziao would not let her go so easily. As expected, Ling Ziao approached Zioliambo step by step and snorted coldly, Damn girl, did you know your mistake? I'm not wrong, I don't admit it. Knowing that he would face being beaten by Ling Ziao like this, Zioliambo stubbornly refused to admit something he had never done before. If you voluntarily admit your mistake, I will ask my aunt to give you food and water to drink. Otherwise, you will continue to ponder and accept punishment. The basement was already cold and dark, and Zioliambo never ate or drank anything. Previously, Zioliambo was tortured to exhaustion by Liya, which would make him completely powerless. Upon hearing Ling Ziao's food and water, Zioliambo's stomach grumbled several times in frustration. Zioliambo frowned tightly, but for things she had never done before, no matter how hard and soft Ling Ziao tried, Zioliambo remained stubborn and refused to admit them. Ling Ziao didn't expect this dead girl to be so stubborn, just as stubborn and stubborn as her deceased mother. Thinking of Gu Jinghan, Ling Ziao thought of the previous paternity test, which revealed that the dead girl was not his biological child. Gu Jingyan's verdict left Ling Ziao feeling a shadow all along, feeling like he had a vast grassland above his head. That's why he made a big fuss and had such a bad attitude towards Zioliambo. Ling Ziao heard her stomach growling incessantly, and he spoke again, children are bound to make mistakes. If you are willing to admit your mistake voluntarily, I will forgive you this time. I'm not wrong. I won't admit something I haven't done before. Ling Ziao didn't expect this dead girl to be so stubborn. He was furious and raised his hand to slap Zioliambo. Zioliambo, who was already weak, lay on the ground powerless and motionless after being slapped by Ling Ziao. Ling Ziao saw that Zioliambo was not moving. He snorted coldly and stepped forward, kicking her a few times. Zioliambo knew that Ling Ziao was kicking her. But she really doesn't have the strength to open her eyes. She lay weakly on the ground, and the cold air blew through Zioliambo's head, causing him to feel a bit conscious. Ling Ziao saw Zioliambo lying motionless, and was even more infuriated. He suddenly stepped forward and pulled Zioliambo up from the ground, saying angrily, Don't you like to pretend to be dead? I'll do it for you. After speaking, disregarding Zioliambo's weakness, he pulled her head against the wall. After several collisions like this, blood seeped out of Zioliambo's head and he became unconscious. Upon seeing this, Ling Ziao reluctantly let go of Zioliambo and angrily shouted, If you want to die, go die outside. Don't die at home, it's unlucky. After speaking, he picked up Lianbao and prepared to throw him outside. As soon as she arrived at the door, Li Ya suddenly stepped forward and excitedly grabbed Ling Ziao's hand, completely ignoring her own weakness. Ling Ziao furrowed his brows and asked indifferently, Aren't you allergic? You're getting better so soon. Li Ya realized that she had been pretending to be weak before, but this time she really didn't care so much. Excitedly, Yao Gu, the people from the Gu family in Kyoto have arrived. The Gu family is one of the top wealthy families in Kyoto. Ling Ziao couldn't believe that the Gu family would personally come to the Ling family. He spoke with some disbelief and asked, Gu family. Which Gu family? Upon hearing Ling Ziao's words, Li Ya knew that Ling Ziao did not believe it was the Gu family in Kyoto. Li Ya patiently explained, it's the most elite aristocratic family in Kyoto, Gu Jiao. If you say they came from their own family, do you think they are interested in our project? such as discussing cooperation with us. I can tell you that those who proactively come to our door are very optimistic about this project. 
we cannot be too soft, we must score 46 points, and we cannot make any further concessions. I have a clear understanding of business matters. Ling Xiao had been asking his secretary to contact the Gu family in Kyoto before. Unexpectedly, the secretary's efficiency was really fast enough, and the Gu family in Kyoto even came to talk about cooperation in person. Ling Xiao was flattered by this full sincerity. As soon as Ling Xiao finished speaking, Gu Jingchen walked in with big strides. Although this was the Ling family, when Gu Jingchen entered, Ling Xiao and Li Ye were instantly cautious and complimented, as if this was the Gu family, not the Ling family. Gu Jingchen immediately saw Li Bao curled up next to Ling Xiao on the brink of death. Without conducting a paternity test, he can be certain that the grain treasure that Ling Xiao is holding is their niece whom they have been looking for 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 over a year. Because she looks almost the same as Gu Jinghan. He glanced coldly at Ling Xiao. Ling Xiao trembled with fear. Li Ye on the side touched Ling Xiao with her arm, and he didn't fall. Ling Ziyao withdrew his gaze and looked at Gu Jingchen, excitedly asking incoherently, Mr. Gu, what do you think about this collaboration? Lai Bao, don't be afraid. I'm the eldest uncle, I'm here to pick you up and go home. Gu Jingchen ignored Ling Ziyao directly. Ling Ziyao stood awkwardly in place. Gu Jingchen picked up Lian Bao from Ling Ziyao's hand, and the weak Lian Bao opened her eyes slightly. When she saw Gu Jingchen, she smiled and whispered, Uncle, Lian Bao didn't harm anyone. Lian Bao doesn't admit his guilt. Gu Jingchen gave Ling Ziyao a sharp glance. Ling Ziyao was so scared that he didn't dare to fart. Gu Jingchen spoke coldly and asked, Ling Ziyao, what exactly is going on? Ling Ziyao ignored his embarrassment and quickly explained, Mr. Gu, this was just a misunderstanding, misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. Misunderstandings can abuse a child under four years old like this. Ling Ziyao saw that Gu Jingchen was not speaking, and he cautiously probed, Mr. Gu, since you are Li Bao's uncle, then we are our own people. I have personally visited the Gu group before and handed over the cooperation plan for a project to your secretary. Has she ever mentioned this to you? Do you want to cooperate with the Gu group? Gu Jingchen did not respond, just casually asked. Ling Ziyao is really shameless. He abused them like this, but fortunately, he wanted to cooperate in front of him. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Make his life more than death. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3 Make his life more than death Ling Ziyao, however, did not get Gu Jingchen's anger. Upon hearing Gu Jingchen's question, he nodded like garlic, licked and smiled in response, who doesn't want to cooperate with the Gu family in the entire business district. It's just that they don't have the good luck of being family members like me. Gu Jingchen was too lazy to pay attention to Ling Ziyao, so he held Xiao Lianbo in his arms and gently comforted him, good girl, it's Uncle Da's fault. Uncle Da is not good. Uncle Da arrived late, causing you to suffer. The little grain treasure in Ku's arms has lost consciousness. Gu Jingchen didn't care about so much, so he quickly took Li Bao home. But as soon as he took two steps, Ling Ziyao blocked him and looked at Gu Jingchen with a playful smile, asking, Mr. Gu, do you think it's better for us to share dividends in this cooperation? Gu Jingchen didn't want to say a word to Ling Ziyao when he saw Li Bao on the brink of death. Xiao Lianbo's hands and feet were cold. He took off his coat and draped it over Xiaolianbo's body, holding Xiaolianbo and leaving the Ling family. After Gu Jingchen and Xiaolianbo left, Li Ye finally regained consciousness and looked at Ling Ziyao, asking, Yao Gu, what kind of kinship does Xiaolianbo have with the Gu family in Kyoto? Ling Ziyao regretted it immensely. He had known earlier that he wouldn't have used poison on Xiaolianbo. He glared angrily at Li Ye and replied, you ask me, I ask who. Li Ye didn't expect that this little grain treasure would have such a good fortune, and it was related to the Gu family in Kyoto. See how much Gu Jingchen cares about Xiaolianbo. Li Ye suddenly approached Ling Ziyao and said, Brother Yao, 
let's go to Kyoto to pick up Li Bao and bring him home. Anyway, you are her biological father. Tiger poison doesn't eat children, how could your own child not recognize your father? If Li Bao were Ling Ziao's biological daughter, Ling Ziao would not have mistreated her like this. The problem is that she is not Ling Ziao's biological daughter at all. So, Ling Ziao was so heartless towards her. Now, hearing what Li Ya said, Ling Ziao was even more infuriated. Unfortunately, Li Ya didn't seem to notice Ling Ziao's displeasure. She continued to swim on the side and said, Yao Gu, for the sake of our family and Sierra's future, please feel aggrieved and take Li Bao home. Li Ya dare not say that for her, Ling Ziao has no feelings for her at all. This time, the reason why Ling Ziao stood on the side was because of the grievances she had portrayed in front of Ling Ziao for so many years, and she did not despise Li Bao. Ling Ziao only showed sympathy for her. In fact, deep down in Ling Ziao's heart, he still loved Li Bao's biological mother. Unfortunately, having a red face is a waste of life. What about being deeply loved by a man, and ultimately not dying? Thinking of Gu Jingan's car accident, Li Ya's lips curled up unnoticed. Ling Ziao was eventually convinced by Li Ya, bought a plane ticket to Kyoto, and prepared to drive to Kyoto to take care of his family and bring back Li Bao. After Gu Jingchen left the Ling family with Li Yanbao, he carefully placed Xiao Lianbo in the back seat. As Xiao Lianbo was cold all over, he turned on the hot air in the car and called his second son Gu Jingming while driving. Gu Jingming answered the phone with a tone of excitement and joy that couldn't be hidden. She asked, Have you received the little girl? Is she next to you now? Let her answer the phone. I want to talk to her. You go to the hospital and wait for me first. Gu Jingchen's face was solemn and his speech was also very serious. Gu Jingming hesitated for a few seconds and asked, Boss, what's going on? I can't explain clearly for a moment, please go to the hospital and wait for me first. After Gu Jingchen finished speaking, he paused for a moment and then added, don't tell anyone else about this beforehand, just say it's temporary overtime. Gu Jingchen was very clear about what Xiao Lianbo meant to so many people in the Gu family. Xiao Lianbo was injured so badly now, so it was better not to let others know. Otherwise, Gu Jingchen was worried that Ling Ziao might lose his life. After hanging up the phone, Gu Jingming didn't dare to delay and quickly went to the hospital to wait. Gu Jingchen arrived at the hospital and walked directly through the employee passage to Gu Jingming's office. When Gu Jingming saw the small grain treasure in his arms, he was furious. Gu Jingchen roughly explained the process to the second person. Gu Jingming was even more furious. But I don't have to worry too much, after all, nothing in the world is as important as the safety of this little milk ball's life. My younger sister is no longer here, and they finally found this orphan. We must take care of her first. Gu Jingning first gave Xiao Lianbo an examination, and many bruises on his body were all from being beaten out. What he didn't expect was that Xiao Lianbo still had a very serious concussion. If they were just hitting with their hands, it would be impossible for them to have a concussion. They must have been dragging Li Bao's head towards a hard place and forcefully causing the child to have a concussion. Gu Jingning wiped off all the bruises on Li Bao's body with the ointment of the bruise, and also wrapped up the bleeding part on his head. Xiao Li Bao lay quietly on the hospital bed, motionless. After Gu Jingning walked out of the ward, Gu Jingchen asked, Is the girl awake? The concussion is severe and I am still in a coma. If I cannot wake up within two days, the consequences will be unimaginable. As a doctor, Gu Jingning is well aware of the consequences of a brain injury. After Gu Jingchen received a call from Naibaozi that day, Gu Jingning was even more excited. Just wait for the milk bun to come home and call him Uncle Air with your own mouth. But now, seeing Nuanzi lying on the hospital bed, his heart feels very uncomfortable. If they could have found Xiaolianbo earlier and brought him home earlier, Xiaolianbo wouldn't have had such an experience. Unfortunately, there is no ifs in this world. 
Boss, are you just watching the Ling family bully the Gu family like this? Of course not. Gu Jingchen is not a broad-dot-minded person. If someone bullies their Gu family, how can he give up easily? Compared to letting Ling Ziao die, what I prefer is to make his life more difficult than death. Gu Jingchen spoke calmly. Gu Jingning couldn't help but shiver. The boss's methods, which he had the privilege of seeing, were unforgettable and unbearable. Although Gu Jingchen is usually friendly to people and seems easy to get along with, in fact, in the Gu family, Gu Jingchen is the most effective. However, he did not have feelings for Ling Ziao, which was brought on by Ling Ziao himself. The Gu family never expected that Ling Ziao would personally come to the Gu family. When he said his purpose was to take Xiao Lianbo home, everyone was furious. Ling Ziao appeared on the blacklist of the Gu family. Ling Ziao personally came to take care of Xiao Lianbo at home. Gu Jingchen has not returned yet. After Gu Hongba sent Ling Ziao away, Mr. Gu quickly called Gu Jingchen to question him. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Is really great. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 is really great. Gu Jingchen answered the phone and didn't know how to conceal it. Gu Hongba's voice was resounding and powerful, I know you have come back. I warn you not to act like a fool, and quickly bring the girl back to me. After hanging up the phone, Gu Jingchen glanced at Li Bao who had not yet woken up, and had no choice but to take her home. There is a spacious room in Gu's backyard specifically for storing medical equipment. Because Gu Jinghan ran away from home when he was young, and later died in a car accident, their mother Tan Meijin couldn't bear such a blow. She often fell ill and it was not a problem to run to the hospital. The brothers were also very busy, so they decided to tidy up the empty backyard and buy all the medical equipment in that room. Every time Tan Meijin was in poor health, Gu Jingning would check her at home. But Gu Jingchen did not expect that one day, this little nanny would need those medical equipment to treat her. Half an hour later, Gu Jingchen drove back to his home. Ling Ziao has been hiding outside all along, and Gu Jingchen is worried about Xiao Lianbo. He wants to take her home as soon as possible and treat her. Gu Jingchen drove very fast and almost ran into Ling Ziao. After he saw it clearly, he ignored Ling Ziao and drove away. Ling Ziao didn't expect that the attitude of the Gu family was so arrogant that they ignored his existence. Ling Ziao quickly adjusted his mentality. There is a saying that goes, mother is precious by her son. He, as a father, can also rely on his daughter for wealth. Thinking of having relatives with the Gu family in the future, Ling Ziao could make a living in the business district like a fish in water, so he put those unpleasant feelings behind him. I can't bear to mess with big plans. It is normal for a wealthy family like the Gu family to hold others in high regard. As long as he doesn't say it, he will always be Xiao Lianbo's biological father, and he can always use Xiao Lianbo's light to deal with the Gu family. Thinking of these, Ling Ziao didn't pay much attention and followed Gu Jingchen into the Gu family. Gu Jingchen was worried about Xiao Lianbo all the way, completely unaware that Ling Ziao had infiltrated. After learning that Xiao Lianbo was seriously injured, the Gu family was extremely worried. Gu Jingchen briefly told his family what he knew. Gu Hongba patted the table and said sternly, This Ling family is really good. Dad, I'm planning to assign several projects of the Gu group to the Ling family. Are you crazy? He treated your sister like Ling Ziao and your niece like this. How many projects do you want him to do? You don't want to be the president of the Gu group, you can resign. Gu Jingchen knew that Gu Hongba misunderstood him. He explained, those projects are all very profitable projects, and at the same time, there is a lot of capital to invest in in the early stage. Ling Ziao is ambitious, so he naturally won't give up the opportunity to make a fortune in the sky. However, Ling Group doesn't have that much capital to turn around. If he does anything for these projects, he will definitely borrow money. When the project is collected and he does it himself, 
he will go all out and won't make any money or repay the loan, which is naturally a dead end. What if he doesn't get hooked and take on so many projects? Isn't your plan ruined? Lao Wu is a lawyer who knows how to put a lot of effort into writing. As long as the contract is written well, Ling Zia won't get a good deal and will even be burdened with debt. Gu Hongba was not very optimistic about Gu Jingchen's plan. He furrowed his brows, and now his heart is all on Xia Libo. Gu Hongba has no interest in how to deal with Ling Ziao. He snorted coldly and said, I'll give you one month. I want Ling Ziao to be punished. Gu Jingchen understood clearly. The Gu family went to the backyard to see Xiao Lianbo. Even if Xiao Lianbo is still in a coma and cannot speak to them, it is still good for them to quietly watch Xiao Lianbo like this. But the Gu family didn't expect that as soon as they arrived in the backyard, they heard a sound coming from the room. Li Bao, wake up. I'm dad, I'm here to pick you up and go home. After Ling Ziao finished speaking, he was ready to pull away the medical equipment placed on Li Bao's body. Suddenly, the door was pushed open. Gu Hongba stood at the door with a cane in his hand and sternly said, What are you doing? Gu Hongba's loud sound made Ling Ziao's hands tremble and his legs soften, causing him to fall directly to the ground. But Ling Ziao quickly realized it. He stared at Gu Hongba and approached him shamelessly. Father-in-law, all uncles and brothers, you haven't rested so late yet. Get lost, who is your father? In law. Gu Hongba gave Ling Ziao no face at all. The few brothers of the Gu family, although they didn't swear at Ling Ziao, his sound of his uncles really disgusted them. I'm asking you, my girl is from the Ling family. Why are there so many scars and why is there such a serious concussion? Although Gu Hongba already had an answer in his heart, he still wanted to personally question Ling Ziao. Ling Ziao was obviously ready to say goodbye long ago. When Gu Hongba asked this question, he explained, it's normal for children to stumble and stumble. Xiao Lianbo is only three and a half years old, which is the age of mischievous behavior. I often go to the company without being at home, and servants take care of my children. How could we be as careful as parents like us? Everyone was very angry and wanted to come forward and tear off Ling Ziao's hypocritical mask. It was clearly he who locked Lianbao in the basement, and the injuries on Lianbao's body were not caused by knocking, but by being beaten. As the father of Li Bao, Ling Zia wouldn't have been unaware that Li Bao was being abused. Although Gu Jingchen was angry in his heart, he appeared calm on the surface. He took a step forward and looked at Ling Zia. Suddenly, he smiled with a sinister charm, but the smile was still lingering in his eyes. He spoke up and said, It's too late today and the Gu family won't be receiving guests. Please go back. In order to thank you for taking care of Lianbao in the past few years, the Gu group will give you several profitable projects to do. In the next two days, I will have the lawyer arrange the contract and send it to you together. Upon hearing that it was a profitable project, Ling Ziao's eyes lit up, completely ignoring whether it was a trap. The fortune teller is too accurate in saying that he wants to be wealthy and wealthy. Look, isn't it just a matter of the father relying on the daughter's wealth? Ling Ziao excitedly left the Gu family. Two days later, Xiao Lianbo woke up. Lying on the spacious bed, Xiao Lianbo looked at the decorations in the room and felt like he was dreaming. Gu Hongba saw Xiao Lianbo wake up and excitedly stepped forward to hold Xiao Lianbo's hand. With tears streaming down his face, he introduced himself, Girl, I am your grandfather. You have gone home, and no one will dare to bully you again. When Xiao Lianbo was at the Ling family before, no matter how much she explained to Ling Ziao, she did not frame Liya, but Ling Ziao simply did not believe it. Now returning to the Gu family, upon hearing Gu Hongba's words, Xiao Libo's nose became sore and tears streamed down his face. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Treats her as if she were my own You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 5 Treats her as if she were my own, Grandpa, 
Aunt Lee has an egg allergy, but she deliberately added eggs to her rice to frame me. I have already explained that I didn't do that, but they don't believe me. Even in order to force her to admit her mistake, she was locked in the basement, not given food or water, and abused. After hearing Li Bao's words, Gu Hongba was extremely angry. She's still a child. How could Ling Ziao get along with that woman surnamed Li? What is the purpose of framing a child like this? Grandpa, do you believe I am innocent? Child, Grandpa trusts you. Finally, someone believed Xiao Lianbo. Xiao Lianbo's heart was warm, and she cautiously probed and said, Will you force me to admit my mistake, refuse to give me food, and lock me in the basement to beat me up? Silly boy, you are my grandfather's treasure. How could my grandfather abuse you so much? When your body recovers, tell my grandfather what you want to eat. My grandfather cooks for you himself. My grandfather is not boasting. He became a Michelin 3.star 3.star chef when he went on a business trip. Okay. Li Bao nodded forcefully. Then she wiped away the tears from the corners of her eyes and let Gu Hongba approach her, wiping away the moist corners of Gu Hongba's eyes. Xiao Lianbo explained with a milky voice, My mother told me not to cry. Crying is not a good child, and even my grandfather should stop crying. We all need to be good babies. At an old age, being described as a good baby by Xiao Lianbo, Gu Hongba burst into tears and smiled. He nodded and said, Okay, we won't cry either. After establishing a relationship with Xiao Lianbo, Gu Hongba's conversation box opened up. I may not have said as much to my sons as I did to Xiao Lianbo this night after all these years. Finally, Xiao Lianbo felt drowsy and said good night to Gu Hongba, then turned around and fell asleep. After Li Bao fell asleep, Gu Hongba put aside his kind and kind attitude towards Xiao Li Bao and replaced it with anger towards Ling Ziao and Li Ya. Turning around and walking out of the room, he called the butler. The butler is not sure why. It's so late, and the old gentleman has always had the habit of going to bed early. Why did he suddenly call him? Gu Hongbo instructed, go to the market tomorrow and buy me all the eggs. Is this a bit too much? The butler was puzzled and didn't know what Gu Hongbo wanted to do, but he didn't dare to ask, after all, he was just a worker. After giving orders to the butler, Gu Hongbo ordered Gu Jingchen to invite Li Ya back for dinner. Gu Jingchen frowned and advised, Dad, are you crazy? That woman almost killed Li Bao. Why did you invite her home for dinner? You will know then. Gu Hongba invited Li Ya back for dinner, so naturally it's not that simple. Xiao Lianbo fell asleep and had a dream. In her dream, Gu Jinghan smiled at Xiao Libo and Xiao Libo exclaimed excitedly, Mom, do you also believe in me, Mom? I'm not the bad kid in dad's mouth. Of course, you are mom's treasure. How could mom not believe you? Xiao Lianbo also smiled. A heartfelt smile. She is finally no longer alone. My mother believes she hasn't framed Liya, and my grandfather also believes she hasn't done such a thing. A warm current surged through her heart. It turns out that being believed feels like this. Suddenly, Gu Jinghan reminded Xiao Lianbo, Baby, mom is leaving. In the future, you need to listen to a few uncles and take care of your grandparents, okay? Mom, why can't you go back to Li Bao's side? Where are you going? Gu Jinghan just waved goodbye to Xiao Libo, and then her appearance gradually disappeared into Xiao Libo's dream. Xiao Lianbo woke up crying and realized that his mother had already passed away in a car accident. Lianbao was feeling low, but she didn't want everyone to worry and hid her emotions. The next day, Li Ya received an invitation to visit the Gu family and was extremely excited. I really didn't expect that the dead girl she had always disliked would also become the daughter of the Gu family, and that dead girl had some conscience, which made her stepmother also shine along. I knew I had been better to her before. 
Li Ye was wearing a high dot end but out of season Chanel outfit with an LV bag on her back. Despite her unadorned appearance and a hint of beauty, she was dressed up heavily and transformed into a little girl. Unfortunately, she was very satisfied with her makeup. She thought that the men from the Gu family were not only handsome, but also single. If she could be favored by one of them, she would also be the young lady of the Gu family in the future. Thinking of this, Li Ye couldn't stop smiling. Only when she arrived at the Gu family did she know what a truly top. Notch wealthy family was. The decoration of the Gu family seems very simple, but in fact, every piece of decoration in the Gu family is valuable. Even the flower pots in the yard are antiques passed down from the Qing dynasty. There was a simple painting and calligraphy hanging in the living room, and Li Ye was stunned when she saw it with her own signature. It was also a work of an international master. These decorations of the Gu family have made Li Ye determined to marry over. She has already decided that as long as one of the men in the Gu family takes a liking to her, she can soar to fame. But she waited alone in the living room until it was time to eat before taking care of her family to greet her. Moreover, it was only Gu Hongba who welcomed her. Gu Hongba is already in his seventies, and Li Ye can take a deep breath. Anyway, Gu Hongba has already stepped into the coffin with one foot, and she can inherit his inheritance when the time comes. Money, beauty, and lack of men make her a life winner. Thinking of this, Li Ye didn't care about Gu Hongba's age and tried her best to seduce him. Gu Hongba couldn't understand the charm. Seeing Li Ye squirming in front of him, he directly asked, Madam Ling, have you cramped? One sentence made Li Ye feel embarrassed to the point of wanting to die in place. Li Ye silently cursed in her heart that he was immortal. But on the surface, they can only smile and dare not contradict. Madam Ling, my granddaughter has been in the Ling family for the past two years. Thank you for taking care of her. Today, our humble abode has specially arranged a banquet for you to have a meal. Mr. Gu, this is all right. Although Li Bao is not my biological child, I have always treated her as my own. Gu Hongba snorted coldly in his heart, treating him as if you were still framing and mistreating her like this. Gu Hongba got up and walked to the dining table, and Li Ye followed him to the table. To Li Ye's disappointment, this meal was only eaten by her and Gu Hongba, an old and immortal person, and was it just a dish? Except for eggs, there are eggs. Li Ye is allergic to eggs. Unfortunately, in front of Mr. Gu, Li Ye dared not say a word. After all, the Gu family invited her to eat, and even if she was hospitalized, she had to endure it. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Is about making your life more difficult than death. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 is about making your life more difficult than death Gu Hongba saw that Li Ye's face was ugly, and he knowingly asked, Madam Ling, why don't you use chopsticks? Are these dishes not to your taste? Li Ye is allergic to eggs, how could these dishes be appetizing? She silently retorted in her heart. However, in front of Gu Hongba, Li Ye still had to maintain a superficial dignity and responded, how could it be? The dishes of the Gu family are so unique, I am really flattered. Since that's the case, why don't you move your chopsticks? Li Ye awkwardly picked up chopsticks and placed an egg in her mouth. However, Gu Hongba did not give up and continued to force Li Ye to eat eggs. When she ate the second egg, red dots appeared on Li Ye's body, and when she ate the third egg, her breathing became a bit difficult. Gu Hongba is still forcing Li Ye to eat eggs. Li Ye really dares not continue to eat. If she continues to eat, Li Ye's life is almost gone. Gu Hongba saw it almost now, put down his chopsticks, looked coldly at Li Ye, and asked, Do you know why I asked the kitchen to make you eggs for this table? Li Ye is not foolish, she seems to understand something. She looked at Gu Hongba incredulously. If she had any problems at the Gu family today, the Gu family would inevitably be responsible. Gu Hongba sacrificed so much for a dead girl. 
Mrs. Ling, my granddaughter didn't put eggs in your rice for you. Why did you frame her? She's just a child, and your heart is so narrow that you can't even accept a child. Mr. Gu, there may have been some misunderstanding. I didn't mean to misunderstand Zioli-Anbo. As I said, I have been married to Yauga for over a year, and I have always treated Zioli-Anbo as my own. So you mean I misunderstood you? Gu Hongba looked at Liya, whose face was already extremely ugly. She only felt chest tightness, difficulty breathing, as if she was about to die at any moment. As she was about to close her eyes, Gu Hongba spoke again, Don't worry, you can't die. What I want is to make your life worse than death. At this moment, Li Ye truly regretted it. If she had known that Li Bao was the child of the Gu family, she would have said nothing to frame Li Bao and wanted to maintain a good relationship with him. Gu Hongba didn't even bother to look at Li Ye, so he directly asked the butler to throw her out. He still has a good sense of propriety. He won't take Li Ye's life, he just wants to help Li Bao breathe a sigh of relief. Now, his breath has also come out. He doesn't need to continue watching Li Ye act in front of him. When Li Ye opened her eyes again, she was already lying in the hospital bed, while Ling Ziyao was guarding the ward. After waking up, Li Ye excitedly grabbed Ling Ziyao's hand, wanting to cry with him. However, Ling Ziyao spoke coldly and said, When you are discharged from the hospital, prepare yourself. Let's get married and divorced. Li Ye widened her eyes in disbelief as she looked at Ling Ziyao and asked, Brother Yao, what are you saying? Li Ye, I already know that Li Bao didn't even add eggs to your meal. You added them yourself to frame her. Didn't Ling Ziyao know about these early on? I just started talking to her about divorce now. Brother Yao, I. Everyone, please be more dignified. I have already asked the lawyer to draft the divorce agreement. Just sign it when you are discharged from the hospital. Now he has relied on his father and daughter, and he doesn't want to be implicated by Li Ye. Even if the Gu family knows, he can still blame Li Ye for all these mistakes. When he pretends to be an innocent victim, the Gu family will definitely sympathize with him even more. The Gu family can also let go of what he did to Li Bao. Ling Ziyao's wishful thinking is very good. Li Ye snorted coldly and said, Brother Yao, if I tell the Gu family the truth about Gu Jingen's car accident back then, what will happen to the Gu family? The car accident of Gu Jinghan back then was not designed solely by Li Ye, and Ling Ziyao was also involved. Ling Ziyao and Li Ye were already grasshoppers on the same boat. Now, Ling Ziyao wants to get out, but it's not that easy. Ling Ziyao didn't expect that Li Ye would threaten him. He quickly changed his tone and coaxed Li Ye, isn't this also for our future? The Gu family promised me to do a few projects for me, which were all profitable projects. Now, they know that you framed Li Yanbao. If we don't divorce, they will become angry and don't give me the projects to do. Then we will have no money. We can pretend to divorce first, and when the funds for the projects are all received, we can remarry. In order to show his sincerity, Ling Ziyao took out a copy of the property certificate from his briefcase and placed it in front of Li Ye. He coaxed him and said, I have already settled in your and Xie's accommodation. Upon hearing Ling Ziyao's words, Li Ye looked at Ling Ziyao with half a doubt. Seeing Ling Ziyao's sincere attitude, Li Ye temporarily softened her heart and believed Ling Ziyao's words. Kyoto Gu Jia after escaping danger to his life, the Gu family held a grand welcome ceremony for Li Bao. Li Bao grew up in the Ling family. Ling Ziao and Li Ye were not good to her. In their eyes, Ling Xie was their daughter. Although she was also Ling Ziao's child, her status in the Ling family was even inferior to that of a servant. This made Li Yanbao feel a sense of difference in her heart, and she never dared to expect more from them because she was afraid that she would be even more disappointed. But now, the favor from the Gu family has warmed up Li Bao's heart. On the day Li Ye was discharged, it was a banquet hosted by the Gu family for Li Bao. Li Ye believes that the Gu family did it intentionally. 
That dead girl has been living in the Ling family for years, and she needs money for food and clothing. Now that she has flown up to the branch, she doesn't care about their life or death. Ling Ziao helped Li Ya complete the discharge procedures and eagerly presented the divorce agreement to Li Ya for signature. Li Ya didn't expect Ling Ziao to be so anxious. Even in acting, she has just been discharged from the hospital and her body is still very weak. She needs to take good care of herself for a while. Yao Ga, I just signed for divorce after being discharged from the hospital. Isn't it not good? Why don't I sign for divorce two days later? Anyway, it's just fake, just a formality. Ling Ziao frowned and looked at Liya. He advised, don't make a fuss. The Gu family is going to give me the project contract to sign in the next few days. There should be no mistakes at this critical moment. Li Ye saw that Ling Ziao insisted on doing so, and she had no choice but to sign the divorce agreement. After signing, Li Ye looked at Ling Ziao and advised, Then Xier, please go take care of her first. I'm about to make a lot of money soon. I don't have time to take care of my children at home. Can you please don't cause trouble for me? Xie was the one you insisted on giving birth to back then, so take it with you. It's just a fake divorce, is it necessary for Ling Ziao to play the whole trick? Li Yebin thought to tell Ling Xie that she was going on a trip, so that Ling Xie wouldn't think too much. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Meeting Billion Dots You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Meeting Billion Dots But she didn't expect that Ling Ziao not only forced her to sign the divorce agreement, but now he also asked her to take Ling Xie'er away. Li Ya realized something was wrong, but she had already signed the divorce agreement and dared not provoke Ling Ziao anymore. She had to follow Ling Ziao's instructions and take Ling Xie'er with her. After Ling Ziao sent Li Ya away, he quickly went to the Gu family. The once desolate Gu family is also bustling with excitement due to the presence of grain treasures. Ling Ziao arrived at the door and was stopped by the security guard. The security guard looked at Ling Ziao and asked, Do you have an invitation? How could Ling Ziao possibly have an invitation? He shamelessly explained, I am Li Bao's biological father. Implicitly, even if I don't have an invitation, my status is higher than yours and you have no right not to let me in. Unfortunately, the security guard of the Gu family seemed to not understand and snorted coldly, I don't care who you are. Without an invitation, you can't go in. Ling Ziao visited the Gu family several times and had already familiarized himself with the terrain of the Gu family. The security guard didn't allow him to enter, so he walked over to the wall in the backyard and climbed in. Xiao Lianbo looked particularly dazzling wearing a haute couture gown and a crown. The people around all cast envious glances at Li Bao. What's the use of hard work? As long as reincarnation is good, achieving success is only a fleeting moment. Some people are envious, while others are jealous and start chewing their tongues. This girl is young and scheming deeply. I heard she even killed her own mother. Right? right. She even put eggs in her stepmother's rice a while ago. Her stepmother was allergic to eggs and almost didn't go to the hospital for treatment. Xiao Lianbo heard the whispers of people around him, all saying that she was not good. Her face was extremely ugly. Uncle Gu Jingyun took a step forward and held on to Li Bao's hand. Uncle Lu, there's nothing wrong with Li Bao. What Li Bao hasn't done before, they can't harm Li Bao, Li Bao comforted softly although she said so, the dim look in Li Bao's eyes betrayed her. Children just don't hide their emotions. Gu Jingyun gave Gu Jingchen a wink. Then, holding on to Greybeo's hand, she walked towards the nearby lounge. Gu Jingyun has never had children, let alone taken care of them, so he doesn't know how to get along with Lian Bao. Seeing that Lian Bao was feeling low and silent, he didn't know how to comfort Lian Bao. He asked softly, Lian Bao, can you play this game? As Gu Jingyun spoke, he opened the game page on his phone and Xiao Lianbo glanced at it. It turned out to be this game. Unexpectedly, 
Uncle Lu is also playing this game. Xiao Liambo nodded and humbly responded, I can do billions of dots. As long as she knows, it's easy to handle, but Gu Jingyun is afraid that she will say she won't. Gu Jingyun boasted and said, It's okay, I'll take you flying. I'll tell you, I'm the second in the world in this game. Uncle Lu, who is the first one? Of course it's my master. Xiao Lianbo thinks Uncle Lu is so amazing. His master is actually the world's number one, so he must have played even better. But when Gu Jingyun and Lianbao each had their own mobile phones and logged into their accounts, Gu Jingyun looked at Lianbao incredulously, not realizing that his master was actually Lianbao. Gu Jingyun is truly both surprised and delighted. Lianbao didn't expect that her stupid disciple online would actually be her sixth uncle. As soon as a game was played, Gu Jingyun said to Li Bao, Master, please follow me later and be careful. Did you see that person's gaze? He must be trying to harm us. Although Lian Bao is playing a game, how can the eyes of the characters in this game match those of Li Ya when his mother had a car accident back then? Li Bao suddenly had a doubt, could it be that his mother's car accident back then was not an accident, but a man dot made one? I thought so in my heart, but Lian Bao didn't tell Uncle Lu about his mother's car accident back then. Uncle, what did you just say? Say it again. Gu Jingyun didn't expect that even Lian Bao was so serious when playing games, and his serious appearance was cute. He repeated what he had just said to Li Bao, and Li Bao's face was solemn. Lian Bao, what's wrong? Gu Jingyun sensed something was wrong with Lian Bao and asked. It's okay, let's play games seriously. Her suspicion about her mother's car accident back then is not entirely certain. She doesn't want to mention it to her uncle, don't want to make them sad, and don't want to startle them. What kind of careful thinking can children have? Upon hearing what Lai Bao said, Gu Jingyun didn't take it seriously and continued to play games with Lai Bao. After a game ended, Gu Jingchen dealt with those gossipy people outside. Let Gu Jingyun bring out the grain treasure. Once again appearing in everyone's sight, Li Bao noticed that these people looked at her with awe in their eyes, and everyone dared not break their lips anymore. Li Bao didn't know what had happened in those short minutes just now. With the help of her grandfather, Li Bao prepared to walk over and cut the cake. Suddenly, Ling Ziao spoke up and called out to Li Bao. Upon hearing Ling Ziao's voice, Li Bao recalled the days when he was abused in the Ling family. Her hands were cold and her legs were trembling. What if the Gu family doesn't like her and wants to return her to Ling Ziao? Li Bao doesn't want to go back with Ling Ziao, and doesn't want to be further abused by Ling Ziao. Lian Bao looked up at Gu Hongba and pleaded, Grandpa, Lian Bao is obedient. Can we just let Lian Bao stay here and not go back to the Ling family with him? Gu Hongba didn't expect that Lian Bao lacked a sense of security. Ling Ziao heard Li Bao's words word for word. Ling Ziao's face was extremely ugly. This dead girl, when she becomes the daughter of the Gu family, she doesn't want to recognize him as her father anymore. What an unfilial daughter. Ling Ziao was furious, but he dared not show it in front of the Gu family. With a smile on his face, he looked at Li Bao and said softly, Li Bao, be obedient. Come over to Dad's place. Li Bao's body dodged backwards, and his eyes were filled with fear as he looked at Ling Ziao. Ling Ziao was even more angry when he saw the attitude of Li Bao. Gu Hongba patted Lian Bao's back and comforted him softly, This is your home. It doesn't matter how long you want to stay. No one dares to drive you away, let alone hit you. Gu Hongba's words brought light back to Li Bao's eyes. Grandpa's words undoubtedly gave Li Bao a reassuring pill. I was originally very worried that the Gu family would return her to Ling Ziao, and she would have to go back to her old days. But when I think about it now, it's completely because she's overthinking. Li Bao gave Gu Hongba a sweet smile and said in a milky voice, Thank you, Grandpa. This sound of grandfather instantly warmed Gu Hongba's heart. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Treating you as best friend
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 8 Treating You as Best Friend Then, Gu Hongba's face changed and he roared at the security guard, who let this person in. The security guards looked at each other, but they didn't let Ling Ziyao in. But now, they are being scolded for Ling Ziyao, and these security guards curse Ling Ziyao in their hearts. However, on the surface, they dare not show it. Xiao Lianbo saw that Ling Ziyao's pants were all dirty and covered in mud. She whispered, Grandpa, he should have jumped in from the backyard. Ling Ziyao felt that Li Bao had no filial piety at all. Anyway, he was her father, and she didn't even shout her father. Returning to the Gu family and becoming the daughter of the Gu family, I wanted to draw a clear line with him. This made Ling Ziyao very unhappy in his heart. Even if Ling Ziyao was unhappy in his heart, he dared not show it. I can only smile awkwardly at Lian Bao and Gu Hongbo. Upon hearing what Li Bao said, Gu Hongbo didn't say anything more, just asked the security guard to drive Ling Ziyao out. Ling Ziyao looked at himself as he was about to be kicked out, and quickly spoke up, Lian Bao, the birthday gift your mother bought for you is still at home. Would you like to go home with your father to get the gift? Li Bao is caught in a dilemma. That was the birthday gift her mother bought for her on her second birthday, and it was because she wanted to buy that gift that her mother had a car accident. She was abused by Ling Ziao and Li Ya at the time, and when she was taken away by Gu Jingchen, she was on the brink of death, completely ignoring the matter of gifts. But now, she doesn't want to go home with Ling Ziao. She's afraid that Ling Ziao and Li Ya will let her live the same life again. However, she also really wants the gift her mother gave her. After all, Li Bao is just a child, and she has written all her troubles on her face. If it were any other gift, Gu Hongba could completely advise Lian Bao not to, and he would buy a new one. But that gift was given to Li Bao by Gu Jinghan, which is of great significance to Li Bao. Gu Hongba weighed his options and advised, Hey, how about this? After tonight's banquet is over, let your uncle take you to get the gift, okay? Is it still possible to do this? Li Bao's eyes lit up again as he looked at Gu Hongba, approached and hugged him, giving him a big smile. Grandfather is the best, thank you, grandfather, he said with a milky voice Gu Hongba looked up and saw Ling Ziao still standing there. He snorted coldly and said, what are you still doing? Why don't you drive him out? Returning to the banquet venue, the daughter of the Qin family warmly held on to Li Bao's hand and said, Li Bao, let's go play by the pool over there. Li Bao doesn't like this daughter of the Qin family. I always feel that her speech and smile are very fake, with a hint of green tea flavor. Li Bao refused, I won't go. My uncle said it's very dangerous over there. It's okay, I'll protect you. After the daughter of the Qin family finished speaking, disregarding the opposition of Li Bao, she directly took Li Bao to play over there. Li Bao's pleading gaze turned to Gu Hongbo. Gu Hongbo thought that Li Bao had been abused in the Ling family for so long, and he no longer dared to make friends. The Qin family and the Gu family also have business dealings. The daughter of the Qin family should be clear about which one is more important and not create any tricks. So, he waved his hand at Li Bao and whispered, Go ahead, Grandpa is waiting for you here. Li Bao's small face became entangled. In fact, Li Bao really doesn't want to play with the daughter of the Qin family at all. However, the daughter of the Qin family is still very charismatic. She took her grain treasure to the nearby pool and gathered many children to play here. The daughter of the Qin family looked innocently at Li Bao and asked softly, Li Bao, why don't you let your father attend today's banquet? Does Li Bao still have a father? The children around them all heard from their parents that Li Bao was an orphan without a father or mother. He was very pitiful, but his life was also very good. He happened to be the orphan of the daughter of the Gu family. Now, being brought back by the Gu family, she has suddenly transformed from a beggar to a little princess. Of course, I just saw it all. Li Bao's father is still very handsome, but Li Bao doesn't like her father and directly asked the security guard to kick him out. 
After the daughter of the Qin family finished speaking, she still had some sympathy for Li Bao's father. Then, with an uncertain tone, he looked at Li Bao and asked, Li Bao, did I say the right thing? Li Bao doesn't want to pay attention to this daughter of the Qin family. The daughter of the Qin family was worried about Li Bao's anger. She took Li Bao's hand, blinked her innocent eyes, and explained, Li Bao, I just want to be your good friend who talks about everything. I can't participate in your past, but I don't want to miss it. That's why I asked you this question. You won't be angry, will you? This statement is very artistic. If Li Bao said she wasn't angry, it would confirm that all the words just said by the daughter of the Qin family were true. If Li Bao says she is angry, it also proves that what she said earlier is true. Li Bao is unwilling to admit this father, which is why he became angry with her. No matter how Li Bao responds, in the eyes of these children, she is selfish. For the sake of her daughter's dream, she even refuses to admit her biological father. And Ling Ziao also became a pitiful old father in the eyes of these children. The world of children is very simple. They think that Lian Bao is a bad child and don't want to play with him, so they push Lian Bao down the pool. Lian Bao couldn't swim and struggled in the pool for half a day, almost suffocating. Gu Jingchen saw Li Bao leave his sight and quickly went to find him, but he couldn't find him for any reason. He quickly summoned several brothers from the Gu family to take separate actions to find him, especially when they learned that Ling Ziao had just jumped in from the wall in the backyard, they became even more worried about the safety of Lian Bao. Gu Hongba frowned and asked displeased as he saw Gu Jingchen in a hurry, today is the welcome banquet for Li Bao. If you have any major matters, please let me handle them tomorrow. Dad, Li Bao is missing. I'm looking for Li Bao. Gu Jingchen expressed his concerns. Gu Hongba's face turned slightly better and he spoke up, the daughter of the Qin family took her to play over there. This child, Li Bao, was brutally abused in the Ling family before and closed his own world. He didn't even want to make friends. The daughter of the Qin family is two years older than her, so he can play with her and invite the Qin family to visit more in the future. Gu Jingchen it's just a big picture away. Previously, the Qin family wanted to curry favor with Gu Hongba, but he didn't even see him in person. Now, just to find a playmate for Li Bao, he has taken the initiative to invite him. Sure enough, in Gu Hongba's eyes, grain treasure is more important than anything else. At this moment, the servant of the Gu family ran over in panic and said to Gu Jingchen, Sir, it's not good. Miss fell into the pool. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 She pushed me into the water. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 She pushed me into the water When Gu Hongba and Gu Jingchen heard the servant's words, their faces suddenly changed and they quickly ran towards the pool. Miss Qin saw Gu Jingchen coming over and suddenly jumped into the pool. She hugged Li Bao and asked with a worried tone, Li Bao, is there anything you need? Miss Qin is just a child, there is no reason for children to go and save them. Gu Jingchen quickly went into the water, carried Li Bao ashore, and brought Miss Qin up again. At this moment, all the guests who came to attend the banquet at Gu's house rushed over upon hearing the sound. Gu Jingning quickly rushed over and pressed on Li Bao's lower abdomen, removing all the accumulated water from her body. Mr. Qin saw his daughter falling into the water with Li Bao and quickly asked, Mr. Gu, what happened? Make the daughter brave and strategic, and save my Gu family's life. Don't worry, the Gu family will compensate you. Mr. Qin thought it was two children who had a dispute and fell into the water together. Upon hearing Gu Jingchen's words, he felt relieved. Their daughter from the Qin family is really proud. Listening to Gu Jingchen's tone just now, I am immensely grateful to the Qin family. This way, he can rest assured. Lian Bao also woke up. After opening her eyes, the daughter of the Qin family pretended to be very innocent and took Lian Bao's hand, asking, Lian Bao's sister, are you okay? You really scared me to death just now. However, Li Bao suddenly shook off Miss Qin's hand and snorted coldly, 
thanks to your blessings, I haven't died yet. Li Bao is usually a very obedient child, what happened today? However, after being abused in the Ling family and returning to the Gu family for just two happy days, they couldn't bear to condemn Li Bao. Gu Jingchen patiently asked, Li Bao, tell uncle what's going on. Li Bao told Gu Jingchen about the process of the incident. The daughter of the Qin family couldn't bear it anymore. She cried and ran into her mother's embrace, seeking comfort. The daughter of the Qin family saved Li Bao. Li Bao not only was not grateful, but also said that it was the daughter of the Qin family who pushed her into the water. Isn't this the real version of the farmer and the snake? Lenovo previously added eggs to the rice for her stepmother, causing her allergies and almost resulting in her death. Li Bao's father came to her banquet, but she refused to admit it and mercilessly kicked him out. Everyone doesn't have a good impression of Lian Bao, thinking that Lian Bao is young and has deep ulterior motives. With the warning from the Gu family just now to those who chew their tongues recklessly, everyone just dares to think in their hearts and dare not say these words. The daughter of the Qin family didn't want to make a big fuss about this matter. What she thought to herself was that when Li Bao just looked back at the family, the Gu family was a face-saving person. Although they helped her clean up the dust and hosted a grand banquet, the Gu family never considered Li Bao as a family. So, no matter what Li Bao says, the Gu family will not believe her words. As long as she refuses to admit it, the truth about this matter will never be known by the Gu family. After hearing Li Bao's words, the daughter of the Qin family ignored the fact that she had just come ashore from the pool and quickly crawled out of her mother's embrace to defend herself. Li Bao is also uncertain whether her uncle will believe what she said. After all, in the Ling family before, every time Ling Xier bullied Li Bao, she would bite back and say that Li Bao was the one who bullied her first, but she was just fighting back. Over time, Li Bao had become unable to explain. However, in the Gu family, everyone doted on her, and even Li Bao didn't want to be wronged, so he mustered the courage to speak up for himself. However, when the daughter of the Qin family also stood up to defend herself, the Gu family fell silent, and Li Bao began to feel uneasy. Just as Li Bao thought that Gu Jingchen would not stand out for her and believe the words of the daughter of the Qin family, Gu Jingchen suddenly spoke up and ordered, Butler, bring out the surveillance footage of this area for me. Li Bao and the daughter of the Qin family were both surprised to hear about the surveillance footage. Li Bao was surprised that there were surveillance cameras in such a remote location, which could exonerate her. Her heart was filled with joy, so her uncle didn't doubt her. The expression of the daughter of the Qin family is different. If the Gu family sees the surveillance footage and knows the truth, then she will act in vain. In no time, the butler brought the surveillance camera over, and the daughter of the Qin family suddenly pushed the child in front of her. The child in front of her had an unstable center of gravity and fell directly into the butler's arms. The butler did not anticipate all of this, and the surveillance camera in her hand did not hold firmly, falling directly into the pool. The daughter of the Qin family is proud in her heart. Now, how can she watch the surveillance footage while taking care of her family? What she didn't expect was that Gu Jingchen's cold gaze swept around him and then retrieved the surveillance footage from the pool. This is just a review, not the original surveillance, he said indifferently the implication is that it is impossible for you to destroy the evidence. The daughter of the Qin family is completely dumbfounded now. After retrieving the surveillance footage, Gu Jingchen fixed it and connected his phone's Bluetooth to start watching. The daughter of the Qin family is even more unbelievable now. The surveillance footage she tried her best to destroy was just a review. What surprised her even more was that the surveillance footage of the Gu family, even the review, could be waterproof. Gu Jingchen kept an eye on the surveillance throughout the entire process, and after he finished watching it, he looked up at the Qin family again. Mr. Qin saw Gu Jingchen staring at him like this, thinking he wanted to thank him. He quickly complimented him, Mr. Gu, this is all that a little girl should do. You don't need to thank her. What should be done? 
Gu Jingchen gritted his teeth and repeated these words, then showed the surveillance footage directly to Mr. Qin. Mr. Qin noticed something was wrong with Gu Jingchen and took the surveillance camera. His face suddenly changed, ignoring the large number of people present. He raised his hand and slapped his daughter. Mr. Qin, this is the Gu family. Gu Jingchen reminded. Voice over. You need to teach your daughter to go back to the Qin family and teach her a lesson. Don't do anything in the Gu family and dirty their territory. Mr. Qin only glanced lightly at Gu Jingchen and knew that he was really angry. You Qin family are really good. I think in the future, the Qin family can also disappear from the upper class society. As soon as Gu Jingchen said these words, everyone present understood his meaning. No one dares to speak for the Qin family, let alone have any business dealings with them anymore. Zioli Anbo felt warm in her heart when she saw her uncle protecting her so much. This is a treatment she has never received before in the Ling family. It turns out that being paranoid and pampered feels like this. With the previous criminal record of the Qin family, everyone can see the status of this small grain treasure in the Gu family. Who dares to say that grain treasure is not good? Saying grain treasure is equivalent to not getting along with money. Who would have trouble getting along with money? So everyone began to praise grain treasure. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Why make a big fuss? You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Why make a big fuss after the daughter of the Qin family's manipulation, the mood of the Gu family was affected, and there was no need to continue this banquet. After sending away all the guests, Gu Jingchen returned to the room with Xiao Lianbo. Xiao Lianbo remained silent, and Gu Jingchen dared not speak rashly. It is unknown whether what happened tonight will leave a shadow on Xiao Lianbo's childhood. The Gu family finally found this orphan, hoping to give her unlimited love, but what happened today was also their negligence. If they had a clear division of labor at that time and left two brothers to guard the entire grain treasure, there would not have been such a thing as the daughter of the Qin family. Li Bao saw Gu Jingchen frown tightly. She raised her little hand and relaxed Gu Jingchen's eyebrows. Uncle, don't frown, you're not handsome anymore, he said softly Gu Jingchen was amused by Li Bao's milky words and asked, you're young, do you know what handsome is? I know, uncle doesn't frown like this, he looks very handsome when he smiles. Gu Jingchen hesitated for a moment and then said, laughing should look good. Who did you learn these words from? No way, uncle. Good looking is a description of a girl. If you're good looking, it's like cursing you for being very feminine. Uncle looks so handsome. Now, Gu Jingchen was completely amused by Li Bao's words. Gu Jingchen raised his hand and touched Greybeo's hair. If my sister is still alive, that would be great. Unfortunately, there aren't so many things that go as planned in this world. After coaxing Li Bao to sleep, Gu Jingchen got up and left her room. As soon as he walked out of the room, Lao Wu Gu Jingfeng waited at the door. Seeing Gu Jingchen come out, he handed the documents to Gu Jingchen and asked somewhat puzzled, Boss, deal with goods like Ling Ziao with a single blow, why bother? Letting his international chief lawyer stay up all night and fiddling with words in the signed contract is really a waste of money. Gu Jingchen calmly took the document from Gu Jingfeng's hand and spoke with a gloomy tone, it's too cheap for Ling Ziao to strike directly. I want him to live more than die, and I want him to regret what he did to Lianbao in the past. Upon hearing Gu Jingchen's words, Gu Jingfeng fell silent for a moment and asked, So, how do you plan to deal with the Qin family? The Qin family is different from Ling Ziao. If we use the same tactics to deal with Ling Ziao to deal with the Qin family, it may not be feasible. The Qin family doesn't need me to take action. After tonight's incident, do you think anyone dares to cooperate with the Qin family? Gu Jingfeng suddenly realized and said the same thing. Although the Gu family doesn't need to take action against the Qin family, Gu Jingchen's attitude tonight is already there. Who would go against the Gu family for the sake of a Qin family? 
Although Gu Jingchen did not say he wanted to deal with the Qin family, it was a fact that the Qin family had completely offended the Gu family tonight. No one will take the risk to cooperate with the Qin family. However, Gu Jingfeng did not have feelings for the Qin family, which was all brought on by the Qin family themselves. They don't even let go of a child, and these three values are not normal. If it were for someone else, the Qin family wouldn't be able to grow their eyes to the sky. The next day, Li Bao got up early in the morning and went to the kitchen to work with the servant. The servant made breakfast and she brought up all the dishes. After the Gu family got up, they saw a small figure busy in the kitchen. Gu Hongba felt heartbroken and quickly called Xiao Lianbo over, holding him in his arms. Gu Hongba's wife Tan Meijin spoke displeased and said, Hug, hug, you've been holding Xiao Lianbo for three days. Even if you're in line, it's my turn to hug. At first, Xiao Lianbo saw Tan Meijin speak in displeasure, thinking that her grandmother didn't like her. But when she heard it later, she realized that her grandmother wanted to hold her, but couldn't grab it, so she was angry here. Xiao Lianbo arched down from Gu Hongba's arms, but did not go to Tan Meijin's arms because Tan Meijin's health was not good, and Xiao Lianbo could not let Tan Meijin hold her, which Tan Meijin could not bear. She sat next to Tan Meijin, her whole head resting on her arm. Such intimacy, coquettishness, and understanding made Tan Meijin burst into tears in an instant. Her daughter, Gu Jinghan, was also as sensible as Li Bao when she was young. Now when I see Li Bao, it's like seeing Gu Jinghan from childhood. Grandma won't cry anymore, she won't look beautiful when she cries. As Li Bao spoke, he lifted his little hand and used it to wipe Tan Meijin's tears. Tan Meijin was warmed up by the gentle persuasion of Lian Bao. She smiled and said, Okay, Grandma won't cry anymore, Grandma won't cry anymore. During dinner, Gu Hongba gave an order and said, Starting from tomorrow, I must wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning. The nine brothers of the Gu family complain incessantly. They are very busy with work every day, and sometimes even work overtime until early in the morning, only sleeping for a few hours. Now they have to wake up an hour earlier in the morning. Isn't this making things difficult for them? I thought that Xiao Lianbo had returned, and Gu Hongba's thoughts were all on him. He would not make things difficult for the brothers anymore. However, they were still thinking too simply. Gu Hongba glanced at a few brothers and angrily shouted, This morning, the bowls and chopsticks were all set on the table by Li Bao. Li Bao knew how to help with household chores at a young age, but you guys are good. You only eat and sleep a day. Are you born in the year of the pig? Does Li Bao help with household chores? The brothers of the Gu family were all shocked. Li Bao shook his head and said, It's okay, Grandpa. When I was at the Ling family before, I used to do these things every day, and I got used to them. Moreover, uncles are busy making money every day and it's very hard. Don't make things difficult for them when doing household chores. Li Bao dared to confront Gu Hongba like this in order to help his uncles. In the Gu family, several brothers dared not speak to Gu Hongba like this. Nine uncles doted on Li Bao even more. Gu Hongba was taken aback for a moment and then asked, When you were at the Ling family, did you have to do household chores every day? Li Bao nodded lightly. Doing household chores is a normal thing, why does my grandfather look so angry? Gu Hongba turned his head and glared angrily at Gu Jingchen, yelling angrily, didn't you say you want to deal with Ling Ziao? Why haven't you taken action yet? Can you still handle it? No, the Gu family group will be replaced. Gu Jingchen I'll be ready to go to the Ling family later to discuss cooperation. In front of Li Bao, Gu Jingchen spoke vaguely, but when he talked about cooperation, everyone present, except for Li Bao, understood instantly. Upon hearing that Gu Jingchen was going to the Ling family, Li Bao suddenly asked, Uncle, can you take me with you? End of this chapter